Promise me faithfully that you'd never fight again. 
And you're drunk. Look, it's all for you. For you and my son. You're going to be Liverpool's first heavyweight champion. This child will never fight, ever. Oh, yes, he will. She won't, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Young Patsy from along the block, she's minding him. She's a good kid. Never so much as a moan out of her. Ow! Which is more than I can say about you. Ronnie, Ronnie, it's Patsy. Quick! <laughs> Who done this to you, Patsy? Tell me. Who done it to you? Barbara Crane. Barbara Crane? But she's 14. She's near old enough to be married. You're only nine. But why did she...? That'll be the rock she perishes on. Me and you going round to the Cranes to sort this out. Mary, keep your eye on him, girl, and put them spuds on a low light. This won't take me two minutes. Come on. <laughs> Love, I've got plenty of religion today. What do you want? Have you seen what your daughter's done to this girl? Doesn't seem much wrong with her to me. She's just kicked ten different kinds of shite out of her. Look, you. I don't know who you are, and I don't particularly care. But one thing I can tell you. My Barbara is a gentle, feminine kind of girl. She's not the type to go around fighting with the likes of that. I mean, she goes to tap and ballet every Saturday. I don't know what they're teaching her at that ballet school, though, but it isn't Swan Lake. She's just ribbing the face off her. 
And I'm telling you that there must be some mistake. Patsy, is this the girl I beat you up? She must have deserved it. Now go on, get, before I throw a bucket of piss water over you, you stupid melt. Stupid I may be, but I do a lovely line of black eye. Now you get into that garden. You've asked for it. And don't say that I didn't warn you. Now you tell Giselle, if she even glances at this kid or any kid, she won't live to see 15 stone. Eric, get it off me! Get it off me! Eric, get it off me! Hey, what have you done to my lovely wife? Oh. Oh. Eric, get off me, you fat bastard! Quick! The police! The bastards have called the police! Leg it! A 300 pound fine and a suspended sentence. They'll lock you up next time. You've got to learn to use your tongue instead of your fists. I know. I think of all these fabulous, quick, witty replies, but I just can't seem to get the right word onto the end of my tongue. I feel the blood rushing from my head. My fists go white and the next thing I know, I'm boxing with them. But I enjoyed it, Nim. The husband. You should have been a boxer. You'd have made a fortune. Yeah, and I might not have made such a mess of my life. Come on, Ronnie. Things aren't that bad. Aren't they? Why, what's up? Mary, I'm on the bones of my ass. I haven't got a penny in my purse. I've got a rob to feed Tony. And I've been up on more shoplifting charges than the Queen's had oysters. And it all makes me feel so angry, I just want to lash out and punch the living daylights out of someone's face. You've seen him, haven't you? He's been released. We got engaged once. And I said to him, I want that suffocating in diamonds before I say yeah. So off he goes into town, and what do you think he brought me back? An engagement ring? A tray of them. Sixteen diamond rings and not one under twenty pound. Didn't cost him a penny. It cost him two years. Mm. Come on, you. Get your glad rags out. Bake that face in makeup, and let's me and you go and find him. Oh, don't worry, Ronnie. If he is out tonight, he'll be spotted by every compact mirror in Kirby. What have I seen? You won't want to go home with me. Oh, he'll come back here. He'll rag your toffees off and he'll have you on your best trail on couch if I've got a dragon by the scruff of the neck. <sighs> now all I've got to worry about is getting away from him for the night. Hmm. I know. I'll slip him a couple of mogadon in a cup of tea. That's a bit much, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you're right. I might need them myself. I know. He can have the Valium instead. I've got them on standing order with the doctor. Don't forget the ladder.
Stranger. Hello, Mary. How are you keeping up? Not as well as you, by the looks of you. When did you get out? A few weeks ago. Have you seen Ronnie? Have you? I wanted to do a bit of grafting first. Looks like you already have. She's missed you, Tony. I've missed her as well. Good. Because she's here. Come on, she'll be made up to see you. It's a bit difficult at the moment. Why? Oh, come on, Mary, you know what it is. Do the manly thing, then. Leave her alone to get over you. <sighs> She'll never get over me. <laughs> oh, don't count on it, pal. There's plenty in here, just itching to get hold of it. There has been for years. Sounds like you might be one of them. If I was a dyke, which I'm not, I'd be more of a man to her than you've ever been. Yeah, go on. Hit me. I'd like to see you getting carried out of here on a stretcher. And another thing, you want to spend a few bob more on your elocution lessons? You're dropping your H's all over the place. No, don't run. Why not? Why don't you wait for him to come over to you? I've waited for two years. Do you all right? Don't go over to him. It's okay, Mary. I can handle him. Oh, Ronnie! Wait! Get outside, you. What? Get out. You should have stopped me. You let me make a show of myself. Where do you go? No, Mary. I'm liable to fucking explode. Don't let it be on you. Not early enough. How are you? Fine, Tony. How are you? Oh, you know, getting by. And Tony? Oh, he's well. As well as can be expected. I didn't mean it to be this way. She doesn't mean anything to me. Has she got her own house, a car, plenty handbag? Because if she has, she'll mean more to you than I ever will. 
Anyway, what am I doing here, even talking to you? I'll come and see you. Leave me alone, Tony. Let me get on with my life. You're too good for me. I'm just a working-class girl from Kirby, and I love it here. I'm not what you want. I can't talk posh, and I don't vote Tory. So what the fuck have we got in common? Jeez, Lord. Anthony, what are you doing out here with her? Hey, you! Have them, girl. Have them with my compliments. You deserve each other. Look a mess. You've got a cheek. How did you get in here? It's my job, isn't it? Getting into places. Not this one, it isn't. Now get your ass out as quick as you got it in. Who do you think you are? Sneaking in here in the middle of the night? What have you to woke the baby up? You'd have frightened him off to death. Stranger like you. I'm his father. This isn't the time to start proving your manhood, mate. got to be somewhere. But it isn't five o'clock yet. Where have you got to be at this hour? Not here. Not after last night. But your home's here with us. Why did you wake up? Don't go. I'll change. I'll stop Robin and I'll try and talk proper and be what you want. Please.
I swear on my kid's life, I'll never let you back. Never. I mean it. Don't come sneaking back like a thief in the night. I won't be the other woman for anyone! Box two. 59 to box two. What can I do for you, Miss O'Gald? What can you do for me? I should imagine there's quite a lot you can do for me. For a kick-off, my son hasn't had a decent meal in two days. He doesn't look particularly undernourished to me. Well, he wouldn't to you. I suppose you're childless, are you? Yes, but that's got I nothing... I thought as much. You see, I blame the father. Can't help himself. I'm sorry, but I don't He's quite... Got this problem. Women. Can't leave them alone. Oh, yeah, he go with any old slut. Any scabby little whore. As long as they've got a skirt on and they're easy. You should have seen the one he was with last night. One smelly trollop she looked to me. Personally, Miss O'Dowd, this has nothing to do with me. And then this is morning. Oh, it must have been ten, two o'clock, when who'd you think I should find lurking in my bedroom? Him. Begging me to take him back. Stayed all night. I was a kick him out in the end. Now, about my claim. I'll just go and check for you. You see, I'm a little bit worried about this infection that I've got. You know, a woman's infection. The doctors told me it's highly contagious. It must be all over Kirby by now. With him. You all right, Portia? Bit of bad news, I'm afraid, Miss O'Dowd. Your claim has been lost. Get me my gyro. Well, that's not possible. You've been told that your claim has been lost. I want my gyro. I'm sorry, Miss O'Dowd. I don't know how many times you need to be told before it sinks in. Your claim has been lost. Bye, Frank. See you tomorrow. In October 85, you assaulted not one, but two store detectives in the centre of Liverpool. The tripped. Miss O'Dowd. They would have had to have tripped off the top of the Empire State Building to have received those types of injuries. They treat us like dirt. Can you make provision for your child? What do you mean? I mean, Miss O'Dowd, that in view of your past record and previous convictions, I have no option 
but to sentence you to 12 months at Her Majesty's open prison, Drayton Hall. 12 months? What for? This court is now adjourned. Tony, merely the baby. I'll look after him. He'll be fine. Don't worry. Oh, Ronnie. I'll be all right. Tune in to yourself, girl. Do you hear? Tune in to yourself. What? You weren't content with robbing her, man. You had to rob her freedom as well, didn't you? Is she that much of a threat to you? I've got work to do. Oh, have you? Well, I suggest it would be in your best interest to put him for a transfer as far away as possible. Like out of Mongolia. Because see you, love. You walk the streets of Kirby at your own risk. Words out on you, babe. He might have got rid of her. But for every Ronnie O'Dowd you lot put behind bars, there's ten of us to take her place. Now be warned. The next time I see you, it won't be the sharp end of me tongue, you see. It'll be the heel of my cowboy boot over the back of your head. Dowd. They've put me in here with you. I'm Brenda Doyle. What are you in for? Fighting. I'm in for armed robbery. I've done the video shop. Well, when I say armed, it wasn't with a gun or anything. A knife? A potato peeler. I'm dead short sighted, me. I thought I picked up the kitchen knife. I'd say Mandel. You robbed a video shop with a potato peeler? I wasn't going to stab them or anything. Well, what were you going to do? Peel them to death? <laughs> <laughs> Got any money? No. Manageress said with weather being so nice, that business had been really bad. I felt dead sorry for her. But you're the one locked up, not here. Oh, no, I'm not locked up for that. It were afterwards, see. We had no <sighs> wheels, so I robbed the getaway car, called Tina Mark V. But I can only drive automatic, and this was manual. I was doing 50 miles an hour in second gear. This gets better and better. What happened next? Knocked over two nuns at a set of traffic lights. I felt terrible. One's got a neck collar on, the other one's lost an inch off a leg. And you see, what makes it worse is that I'm religious. Well, I don't actually believe in God, but I do say me prayers. Anyway, it's all right now. I wrote to the nunnery asking for forgiveness. I got a lovely letter back from the Mother Superior. She said I should give up crime and do something constrictive with my life. So when I get out, I'm gonna go on the game. Oh, that'll be the dinner bell. I'm starving, are you hungry? Enough for the pigs, will we'll save in here. Oh, I love prison food, I do. Instant mashed potato, gravy granules and frozen peas. <laughs> Quick, wait, before there's a cue. Cigarette, Doyle. I haven't got any, Alice. I said cigarette. I haven't got any. You were supposed to do my work this afternoon, Doyle. I forgot, Alice. I'm sorry. I said up. <laughs> I've warned you about this. How's your arm coming on? 
Oh, I'm sorry, Alice, please. I really meant to do it, honestly, it just slipped my mind. I thought about her as soon as I woke up. I... Then take this as a last warning. My work had better be done by the morning shift, or else you're gonna be very friendly with the doctor. Hey, that hole. What did you dare to say? You heard me, fat hole. What are you going to do for a face when Jabba the Hutt wants its ass back? You're going to be very sorry you said that. Pick on someone your own size, like a humpback whale. Think you're up to it, do you? Leave her alone. And what if I decide not to? Then I'll decide to stop you. In the gym, 15 minutes. I just hope you like sitting down, cos I'm gonna put you in a fucking wheelchair. You looking at? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stir. And stop apologising. No wonder she picks on you. Oh, you're a bag of knaves, you aren't you? I get it from my mum. Where is your man? Rochdale. That's my hometown. It's great in Rochdale. I left home when I was 13. And you never went back? No. I went back about 18 months later on my 15th birthday. 
You've put on weight, she said. I hope you're not pregnant. And you can't stay here. There's nowhere for you to stop now. She gave me a tenner, though. That's why I left home in the first place. Because of your mother? No. No, it weren't her. It were him. Me mum's fella. Reg. I used to knock her about. He'd lay into her for now. And it were moan, 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 non-stop. That's all I remember about growing up. So I buggered off. Did he hit you? I hate men, I do. How do you fancy breaking out of here and doing a night on the town? Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. Just think of all that lovely ale floating down the back of your gully. We might even cop off with a few bits of gorgeous men. Men? No, thanks. I wouldn't touch a man if he was the last woman on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I turn out the light? What are you thinking? It's always the kids that suffer. What did he do to deserve a man like me? I bet you're a great man. Oh, a quick-tempered fool, that's what I am. Oh, you'll be all right with Mary. Good night. Nice. Thanks for sticking up for me with Big Alice. Why didn't you bring the baby with you? He had a court order on him. I tried to stop them. Who's got him now? He's at Wellfield House. You said you'd look after him, Mary. Do you think I just stood there and said, yeah, oh, then take him? I'm not asked. I just wanted to protect my kid from the state. Who took him? The social services. Once a child ends up in one of them places, you never get them back. Not properly. Well, I'm not having it. There's nothing you can do. Go round to my house, and in the top drawer of my bedside table, there's a brown envelope. Take it, then go to Tony Bone and give it to him. But well, he's with her? He's hurt you enough. Tell him to meet me tomorrow night. He'll know where. And to bring plenty of money. Not him, Ronnie. You're just making a rod for your own back. All that's over. I'm sick of throwing good love after bad, and he owes me and my son. So tell him that if he doesn't show, I'll blow him up for every job he's done in the last five years. And I'll blow up so hard, he'll think he's got a cruise missile shoved up the end of his ass. You'll only make things worse. Look me in the eye, Mary, and tell me hand on heart what you'd do if it was your kid stuck in some home for the neglected. I'd be out and over that fence as fast as my heels would carry me. You get caught for sure unless you're with someone who knew the way around. I know Rochdale like the back of me hand. Please, Ronnie, don't say yes now. Just sleep on it. Go to sleep, girl. Go to sleep. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Go to the locker room where they keep our outside clothes. And get me coat, me shoes, the black leather ones with a big heel. We've only got 15 minutes. All you okay. And don't forget me shoes. Oh. Right. Up that 
拿着。These and they're yours. I told you, black high heels, leather ones. I can't wear these Cornish pasties, you dozy sweat. It is in these clod offers. Oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Put mine on. We've only got three minutes. So come on. <laughs> Jump. Jump. with you, but I just can't. And it's no good you're begging me because I've got too much to do. Me, just say. Pop the taboo is in. Oh, Ronnie, please take me with you. I can't. I'd love to if I was going home, but I'm not. I do all the cleaning and cooking. Help with the little lad. Please, Ronnie. 
Tell you what, when I get back, I'll get in touch with you. And you can come and stay for as long as you want. Can I? Can I really? For as long as you pick and want. Right. I'll be off then. Where will you go? Oh, don't worry about me. I've got mates all over the place. Macclesfield, Oldham, Barnsley. Hey, I'll go to Barnsley. I've never been there. It's supposed to be right exciting as Barnsley. Come on. Right. Try then. Love you. Couldn't stand up there a minute longer. Where's the baby? He's in the car with my fella. What are you going to do then? Find your dad. But he's in New York. Besides you and Tony, he's all I've got. I want to be somewhere. I don't have to keep looking over my shoulder. I was born here. Just behind Bobby Shewood's stall. My mother had me on a bag of budgie millet. <laughs> I don't think she ever got over the shame of it. Oh, my poor man. She was dead ladylike. Couldn't take the hard life. And with my dad being the way he was, well, he didn't help either. Why? <sighs> Fighting. Drinking. Dreaming. I think it was the mad fantasies that turned her in the most. Forever coming up with a new brainwave to get more handbag. And always waiting for the ship to come in. It did. But we dreamed about going to the States. All his old mates went away to sea. And New York? God, he thought it was some mecca. He meant to come back and look after us. He just never did. <sighs> Ronnie, you belong here. I don't want to belong to somewhere. I want to belong to someone. But New York's a violent place. How did he look? Same as ever. Did he? Did he ask about me? Bastard. I give this money for you. Is the passport there? Yeah. Mary, just look at that photograph. What have you got on your hair? Lock tight. Oh no, I look like a cat on heat. <laughs> Thank you. 
O'Dowd. John O'Dowd. Oh, you must know him. Scott's fella. He's loaded. Lives upstairs on the top floor. Oh, love, I've travelled all the way from Liverpool. Liverpool, England. You better go back and check. I have checked, and I'm certain he's not staying here. It would show on the computer. You'll excuse me? Oh. What are we going to do? I can't find Granddad. Hey, honey. Did you say you were looking for John O'Dowd? You don't know him, do you? I sure do. But they said in the hotel... Don't pay any attention to them. What would those shitheads know? Here, hold this. Hey? Where are you going with me, son? Do you want to see your daddy? Come on. How do you know my dad, Ben? I've known him for years. He's a great guy. Are you from New York? Me? From this hellhole? Honey, let me tell you something. I'm from the real United States of America, Kentucky. Bluegrass country, where they make the men big. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Been here over 20 years. Came with a show in 65. A show? Yeah. I've been in all the big shows and reviews, did two years in Vegas and Broadway, Chicago. I can still do the splits and kick my foot right up, right up over my head. I bet you can. <laughs> Were you a good dancer then? Oh, hoofer you mean? No. My speciality was the uh, wriggle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, your original tits and ass girl. <laughs> Do you think it suits me? What? My nose. I bought it six months ago. You bought it? I sure did. I saw the picture in a magazine, tore it out, and took it to a plastic surgeon. I want that nose, I said. Well, 1600 bucks and two swollen days later, I had it. <laughs> Hi. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> I've had liposuction, an ass lift, and I'm putting away for a chin job. Oh, honey, it is just the greatest love as ever. Oh, I couldn't let anyone touch me like that. I said that once, and one morning I woke up and looked in the mirror, and this wrinkled little old lady looked right on back at me. I screamed, she screamed, and we both decided that one of us had to go. Oh, she went, I stayed. <laughs> He's in there. Hey, how long are you staying here for? Well, come by and see me. I got a couple days off, and I live in the same neighborhood as your daddy. Well, thanks for all your help. Don't mention it. Come on, babe.
Jane? No, Dad. It's me. Veronica. You should have told me you were coming, you know, because I got the place nice and clean. There's all sorts of spare at the moment, Dad. How have you been? Me? Uh, oh, yeah. Great. Never better. I've, uh, I've done really well for myself in that. This place. Just a hiccup, Queen, just a hiccup. We out here soon enough. See, sit down. I'll get a drink. You told me you were a tycoon. Well, I was, kid. I had everything. Money, cars, respect. Oh, yeah. Everybody in the New York boxing fraternity knew John O'Dowd. Well, what happened? You know, just a, just a wrong investment here and a bit of bad luck there, you know. Oh, but I shall uh, be on top again. She will see. Oh, this, don't worry about this. Just something that puts some fire in my old bones, that's all. Anyway, listen, we've got all night to talk about me. I want to hear about you, my grandson, and Liverpool. He's dead tired, Dad. It's done in. I should put him to bed. <laughs> Come on, Tony. It's OK, Tony. <laughs> Shall I tell you a little story about the bunny rabbits? Lonsdale Belt. Should have won it many times. I had the muscle, you see, and the speed. Just wasn't given the opportunities, that's all. Why did you leave? I had to leave. I didn't mean to do it. It was just part and parcel of the game, you know, a knuckle. It's a weapon, you see. Wasn't a bad lad, Christy Morgan. Not bad for you. One punch wasn't even a hard one either. He just didn't get up. Just lay there like a side of beef. It's manslaughter, they called it. Anyway, mate's got me on this ship. The poor Cardiff, New York, the Caribbean. I saw the lights of man and the people. Knew then I'd never go back. So I couldn't go back. I was trapped in a movie. A movie called America. You didn't half miss your dad. Oh, fuck it anyway. No, oh, don't worry, Dad. I'm here now. Me and Tony. They'll take care of you. You should never have come. Oh, I can handle it. Listen, honey, 
Let me tell you a few things about John O'Dowd. Okay, so he's a drunk, but he's a good guy. You know, when he first came over here to the States, I sort of, well, you know, you should get the hell out of this dump and come out on the town with me. I can't. What about me, Dad? Honey, you aren't going to see him until he's drunk himself sober. Oh, hell, he'll be okay. We'll catch him later. Oh, why not? are so sophisticated on a woman. The room, okay? Oh, not these ones. My, aren't they exquisite? You know, pearls really complement the skin of an older, a more mature woman. You're not that old. Did you ever see that film, Shangri-La, where the beautiful young woman goes out, faces the real world, and turns into an old crone? Yeah, why? They could have based that film on me. You know, I've got this nightmare. I'm walking down Fifth Avenue, looking good, feeling great, and then suddenly, twang, my ass lift falls, and I look like shit. You could never look like that, because you're not ugly inside or out. <laughs> anyway, there's no sense dreaming. They cost 400 bucks. <laughs> I could never afford them. <laughs> This, this is Trey you. No, I like my drawers with a little bit of gusset in them. Anyway, what would I look like in that with my big shoulders? A man in drag? Peach goes with your eyes. But my eyes aren't peach. The green. Well, look at the shape and form of it. Oh, you've got to have it. Let me buy it for you. No. Don't you like it? No, it's gorgeous. It's lovely, Lavella. It's really feminine and fluffy. But I just don't like to spend money on myself. I prefer to spend it on little Tony. Can I help you? Yes, no. I'd like to know. Oh, what's she like? Come on. He'll be in a bar somewhere getting stoned out of his head oh. unless he's run out of his money. I mean, your money. <laughs> oh, well, he'll stop now that I'm here to look after him. Oh, I doubt it, hon. Your old man is sick, ill with the booze. Why, only last week I found him bad. I mean, really bad, spitting up blood and all. He still thinks he can take on the world. Just hasn't got the strength for it anymore. Well, I have. Let's go and find him, Lavelle. Right. So weak. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow you spend the day with your pop, and then in the nighttime we'll hit the town together. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, spread out a little. Wait, Lavelle. Close your eyes. Uh, what for? Close your eyes and see. Look. Oh. 
them. Oh, you didn't buy them for me, did you? Not exactly. Oh, that is the sweetest, loveliest thing anybody's ever done. But you aren't the only smart ass in town. <laughs> <laughs> Told you peach was your color. Oh, Lavelle, it's lovely. <laughs> See you tomorrow night. Thanks. Dad, I've got you a nice big breakfast. Ah, I don't think I can manage that. I'll try some. Just a little bit. Oh, come on, Dad. An empty sack won't stand. I'm in New York to be with you. Yeah, I'm sorry, Queen. Tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to take you down to the bar, my local. I've got to meet my mates. I've got uh, hundreds of them all over the place. That sounds like a great idea. When, this afternoon? No, no, no. Now, this minute. Celebrate you and my grandson arriving in New York. Dad, I don't want you to go booze and leave it out, knock it on the head. Just helps me clear my mind, that's all. Have you got any money? Um, I don't know. Just a bit, ten dollars and... You're sick, look at you. I don't want a fucking lecture. You gonna give me the money or not? Of course. You can have anything you want. You can have this. 
when you've ate your breakfast, not before. Oh, no, you don't. If you think I've travelled halfway across the world to sit and let me and my child watch you kill yourself on booze, well, you're mistaken. Now get that food et. Come on, Tony. Can't we spend the day together? Are you gonna give me that fucking money? Just gotta go out. It won't be long. Look, I... It's not really me, wanna... Huh. I don't mean to hurt you, kid. Will you come back, Dad? Yeah, of course I will. Had this stored in my place. Thanks, I'll just put it over here. You look fantastic. <laughs> oh, you like my new outfit, huh? Tight, ain't it? Oh, I love it on you. Why, where are you going? Where are we going? I can't go out, Lavelle. Oh, this is the babysitter. Mrs. Skudlapsky, this is the English lady I was telling you about. Hello, sweetie. Me and your mama are going out for a couple of hours. Now, you be real good with Mrs. Skudlapsky. I can't leave me baby with a complete stranger. Oh, it'll be all right. I've known her for years. She has a heart of gold. I can't go out, Lavelle. Look, I spent $12 on a manicure, and I practically took out a second mortgage on this do. Do you like it? Oh, I was going to have my usual color golden dreams, and then I thought, oh, the hell with it. Let me go for the coral caress wig instead and hope for the best. <laughs> but my dad isn't back yet. And what if he comes in and finds me gone and the baby left with a stranger? Honey, you know as well as I do that when John O'Dowd comes falling through that door, he ain't gonna know what day it is, let alone worry about where you are. Aw. You know how he is. I'm really worried about him. He went out this morning and he looked the colour of boiled shite. You need a night out. A girl's night out. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. Tonight we'll go out on the town and have ourselves a ball. And then tomorrow we'll take him to a doctor. A good one. There isn't anything you can do about it tonight. Oh, lighten up. You're in New York. And it's one hell of a place to be on a Friday night. I'll go and get me slap on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's monster bound. Oh, I think he's killed. He's thick. He's as dim as a two-watt bull. He didn't speak two words to me the whole time he was in there. And your fella! Oh, isn't he a living doll? He's only 25. I know. I'm old enough to be his big sister. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to drag him down the aisle. I just want to have some fun. Oh, I want a sweet young thing to throw me all over the bed, tear my clothes off, and make love to me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that girl. 
Just don't expect me to do the same with Dunkin' Donuts there. Did you see the size of him? He's bound to be in proportion. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't you do yourself a big favour and have the both of them? What'll you do? Well, I've got me travel vibrator with me. I mean, what more does a girl need? I never go anywhere without me bits, just in case. <laughs> Where are you guys going to take us then? Well, where would you like to go? I'd like to go here. <laughs> what is it? Pulling hair and scratching out eyes? It might be, but why don't we go and find out? Yeah, why don't we? What do you say? Well, we live in a democracy. Sure, let's go. <laughs> oh, I haven't been to a fight for such a long time. <laughs> Neither have I. A taxi! Ladies and gentlemen, we did expect to have a real fight for you here tonight with our own Brooklyn Heights Helen. Her opponent couldn't make it. Jersey. So, uh, oh, can't say I blame her. We're offering one of you ladies the opportunity to step down here and go just three minutes with Helen. You just have to stay up for three minutes, and you can win yourself a thousand dollars. So come on. <laughs> Any of you women out there tonight? How much is a thousand dollars in English money? Why are you thinking of giving it a shot? Yet I am. Honey, you can't be serious. You're not a fighter. I can stay in the ring longer than three minutes. I bet you she can't. Oh, honey, you've had too much champagne. No, I haven't. Hey, all mate. Hmm? I'll take it on. Shit, she means it. <gasps> what about your pretty little face? You'll never get a nose like that again. I should know. that <laughs> and what's your name mind your own business well well what have we here you gonna tell us where you're from liverpool england do you have a job yeah i'm a fucking manicurist and what is this the johnny carson show okay lady have it your own way look lady it's not too late to turn back helen's fucking tough you sure you want to go through with this been in there like that all night long so I fixed myself a drink painted his toenails and had a bubble bath he won't ask for number 31 again in a hurry <laughs> <laughs> oh Lavelle is that you I just turned 19 when that was taken in my second big review moon glow wasn't I beautiful you still are <laughs> made the second page of variety too 
Well, not just me. A few of the girls from the line. I'll show you. I keep everything from my show business career in here. Costumes, makeup, press clippings. Now, where is it? <laughs> here it is. This is me. And this is Jean Page. Missy Page, we called her. Always interfering and gossiping. She ended up on a commune where they practice free love. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's little Yvonne Walker. She was always looking for a husband. Got one in the end, too. Real rich. Made his fortune in vitamins. Not that it done Yvonne any good. She took to the refrigerator. <laughs> Why, she's so huge, she wouldn't even fit through that door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess they all did pretty well for themselves. And what about you? I made the classic mistake. And what was that? I believed them when they told me they loved me. Hold on, honey. I'll just get that. Hi! Yes, this is Lavelle Summers. Who? No, I don't... Oh, last night. Sure, yes, hi. How you doing? It's him. Who? Last night, the man from Knuckles, remember? Sure, I remember your proposition. But look, it's like this. We don't reckon that a thousand's enough, not considering that you charge 20 bucks a head just to get into your place. No, that kind of money really doesn't interest us. Three grand? No, that still doesn't have the right ring about it. Now, why don't we say 10 grand? Hey, wait a minute, mister. You think this is some dumb, cheap fuck up from 42nd Street you're talking to? I've been in this business for years, and I know what you guys are raking in down at that place of yours. Uh, well, we'll think about it and get back to you. Uh, yeah, as soon as possible. You're not going to believe it. He took it. He took it. Oh. Five grand just to step into the ring. Ten grand if you win. It's, how do you say, plenty handbag. But I just know me dad is going to be dead against it. I'll have to go Lavelle and sort it out with him. <gasps> I've left the baby with Mrs. Skudlapsky. She's probably off a cake by now. Hiya, love. How you keeping? Howdy. Doing great. Thanks, yourself? Not fighting, not you. I've been fighting all my life. Look, your mother was a lady, and I promised that there'd be no more fighting ever again. Was that before or after you left us to fend for ourselves? I did that to save you from it. Don't give me that crock of shit. I've been reading it in your letters since I was a little girl, and I believed it. Just look at you. My funeral. That's where you're wrong. How? You go to that fight over my dead body. America hasn't been good to you, Dad. And you know it. It's too hard here, too cruel. I can't wait to get you back home. Have you got any idea what these things have done to my life? Could have been a manslaughter charge. Stop. I've heard enough. I can take the booze, the filth, the fantasies, but I can't take any more manslaughter charge stories. Christy Morgan's still alive. I killed him! You liar. He's as fit as a fiddle and propped up the bars in Kirby. You left us, Dad. Me and my mother. You left us because you're self-centered, selfish and hard-hearted. You didn't care about us. You wanted the American dream. But it isn't a dream, is it? It's a nightmare. Look, Dad. Look at me. I know you don't love me. I know I'm like some painful memory come back to haunt you. But you're an alcoholic. And you'll die if you don't stop and get better. I can get you well in Kirby. 
I'll have plenty of money to look after you. OK, so I've run away. I know I should have brazened it out. But I'm going to go to that fight tonight. And I'm going to win us some money to take us home. You go. And you're never going to see me again. I need you there tonight to give me strength. Go. Just don't come back here. Just get on an aeroplane and go home. <laughs> I'm going nowhere without you. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Liverpool's own Clon Fist. We'll see about that, buddy. Don't worry about her, honey. She's nothing. I wish me luck, Lavelle. for 12 months, so I've sort of got this date that I just can't get out of. Will you ever come back, John? What do you say, kid? I doubt it. But it's not too late. Why don't you come with us? I've got the money. What would I do in Liverpool? I mean, at my age. 
Oh, they'd love you and Kirby. They really would. I'll never forget you. You're dead special. Take care, honey. <laughs> Take care of your pop. Bye, babe. Troll of Al. Bye, Tony. Something for you. Uh, made it myself. Not engraving though. I got done in New York too. Uh... Uh, oh, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 